Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gav the Masterline74 back again today and welcome to another Valve Source Code tutorial follow-up video. And today I'm going to be talking about the Source Shader Editor. Now, I don't really have anything to follow up on in regards to the creation or even usage of custom shaders with this editor, but I'm going to be talking about some issues that other people and myself have experienced, so let's get started. So first things first, I know some people said they couldn't get the shader editor code compiled on their system. And from some testing that I did in the past, the DLL files that Biohazard 90 provided didn't end up working properly. So I think what I'll do is I'll create a fork of the source shader editor repository on GitHub. And then I'll just upload the DLL files that I was able to compile. That way you don't need to worry about doing any of the shader editor code compilation stuff on your end. You just have the DLLs ready to go. Now something I was wondering, which is why this video has been delayed as much as it has, was to actually see if the shader editor code could be compiled on other platforms such as Linux or Mac. I don't really have any way to test Mac code compilation, so I'm just going to be considering Linux for this video. Now, if you try to create the shader editor solution, for example, by opening up a terminal and doing the command devtools forward slash bin forward slash VPC plus shader editor forward slash MKSLN of shader editor dot Mac, then VPC will say there are errors and no projects were generated. Of course, you'd have to enable VPC to run as an executable. That's something I talked about in a previous video. But the reason for this is because the shader editor code was only intended to be used with Windows. And so to fix this issue, if you can even call it an issue, you'd want to go to your source shader editors SRC VPC scripts folder, open up projects.vgc, and just simply remove the square brackets dollar sign win32 that you see from the first three projects. That's all related to the source shader editor, and that dollar sign win32 means only make the win32 version and if you try to make another platform then that project gets skipped. So now if you try to run the VPC command again that I suggested earlier, you'll actually see some errors with missing files. Now the missing files for the VGUI controls editor project are actually due to the fact that Linux is a case sensitive operating system. So basically a lowercase c does not equal a capital C, whereas on Windows, they would be the same thing. So to fix this, you want to go to the source shader editors SRC VGUI editor folder, open up VGUI controls editor.vpc and find the color.h line and just replace the lowercase c with a capital C and then with key values.h you want to capitalize the K and the V. And then the other missing file error is with memoverrides.cpp. So to fix this, you want to go to the source shader editors SRC VPC scripts folder, open up source DLL POSIX base.vpc. And I don't think you need to do this, but I'll say it anyway. You want to add dollar sign include of, and then in speech marks, dollar sign src dir backslash shader editor underscore platform dot vpc and then when you see the dollar sign src dir line with memovoid dot cpp you just want to replace the dollar sign src dir with dollar sign target underscore src underscore directory as you'll see in the video then you want to save the changes run the vpc command again and what you should find is that you get a shader editor.mac file and that's good, right? But if you try to actually run a make command using that make file, then there's going to be a bunch of errors. I mean, what was you expecting? Of course, there's going to be errors. From inspection, it looks like there's two different file paths that get concatenated together, which is just not right. And you'll also get errors with missing include files. However, it's not that the files are missing. It's just that it's the case sensitivity issue that I talked about earlier. You'll just have to make sure that the capitalization of the letters is all accurate. Alternatively, the issue could be down to missing library files or the fact that Linux might not be able to use .lib files, unlike Windows. But if you check the lib public Linux32 folder, 
then you can see that instead of .lib files, for the most part, Linux uses .a files instead, except for tier 0 VSTD lib, which actually use .so files. So you can probably change some of the VPC code to use these .a or .so files instead of .lib files. But if you want to investigate this further, please do so because I'm not going to. The best attempt that I was able to conjure was to actually integrate the shader editor code into a Source 2013 single player SRC folder. And even after the whole renaming of a whole bunch of files and all of that shit, basically I got a bunch of errors and I don't know how to really fix them. I think one of the errors was because of a function that I think is Windows only. I don't know. So yeah, you can check that out if you want to. I'm not going to. And so the other part of this follow-up video is going to be covering Source 2013 multiplayer mods because with the recent release of the Team Fortress 2 code and the 64-bit update to said code, one thing that is a question that some people have had is can the Source Shader Editor work with this new version of Source 2013 multiplayer? Now the simple answer is I don't know, but the cynicism within me wants to lean more towards an answer of no, and quite heavily too. But why is that you might be wondering? Well, let's go over some basic information first. So the source shade editor uses two DLL files, on Windows anyway, and they need to go inside of your mods bin folder, or mods bin x64 folder with new source 2013 multiplayer mods. But these DLL files are called shader editor 2013 and game shader DX6. Now the reason for the game shader DX6 DLL is because according to Biohazard 90, when Source 2013 first came out, Valve broke shader loading through the wildcard game shader generic Asterix, where Asterix is the wildcard. But for new Source 2013 multiplayer mods, instead of getting a game shader DX9 DLL, which is the actual file in Source 2013 single player that would actually be responsible for loading custom shaders, you'll actually see that the file is now game shader generic example. Now I'm bringing this up because you probably would need to rename Game Shader DX6 to something like Game Shader Generic Shader Editor for example, but I don't know about that. But let's get into some more technical details now. So the new Source 2013 multiplayer code, as I alluded to earlier, has 64-bit support, but the Source Shader Editor was made when the 32-bit version of the code was all we had access to. Now one thing that is something that you need to know. You can't use 32-bit DLL files with 64-bit applications. It just doesn't work. I'm not going to get into the super nitty-gritty technical detail as to why, but I'll show some AI-generated answers I got to this question, and you can sort the information that is shown and let me know if the AI is actually accurate here or not. Now you might think that you can't create the 64-bit version of the shader editor code through VPC because there's not any explicit errors that says that the solution doesn't get created for some reason, but that is because of the Linux issue I talked about earlier, you just want to remove the square brackets $win32, and then you can create the 64-bit version of the source shader editor code. Now, you can't compile the 32-bit version of the shader editor code using a 64-bit source 2013 multiplayer mod as a base, because there will be a bunch of compilation errors. You can't upgrade the platform tool set of the 32-bit shader editor projects because you'll get compilation errors. You can't upgrade the 32-bit shader editor projects to have x64 support from within Visual Studio because you'll get a ton of compilation errors. You can't use newer 64-bit library files because it introduces errors with unresolved external symbols. You can't use 32-bit library files because you'll get conflict errors between x64 and x86. You can't override the VGUI controls, dev tools, or VPC scripts folders with Source 2013 multiplayer versions because you'll get errors with certain functions and you'll get unresolved external symbols or errors saying something to the effect of do you have hashtag include of cbase.h somewhere in memovoid.cpp, which is not necessary. And that's pretty much all of the stuff I could think of, and yeah, none of them work. 
So if you can think of anything else that I've not mentioned, feel free to let me know. But to be honest with you, I don't want to be spending countless hours looking into this and delaying this video anymore. I've done as much as I can looking into this and to be honest with you, I don't think any Linux version or 64-bit Source 2013 multiplayer version of this shader editor thing is going to work. I just hate to break it to you. But if you have any suggestions, fixes or comments about this, then please let me know and as always, take care of there. Peace out. See you later. Hopefully it's not going to take too long for the next Valve Source Code tutorial follow-up video to come out and I hope you'll check it out when that releases. So have a great day and see you for the next video.